Hey what's happening guys, welcome to your fourth JavaScript and the DOM tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about the query selector. Alright then, so from here on in I'm going to start using the text editor to create our JavaScript rather than write it all in the console over here, purely because as our script gets larger it's going to be easier to maintain inside this file than it is in the console. So I've completely wiped this clean. We've got an empty file in app.js at the minute. Also, I've got this index file open, which is gonna be our HTML that we're gonna query in a minute. So, the query selector. This is probably the easiest way to query an element from the DOM, and it's very similar to how jQuery works. So if you've ever used jQuery before, it looks something like this. A dollar sign, first of all. Then in parentheses, we pass through a CSS selector for the elements that we wanna grab. So for example, if we want to grab this element right here, this div with an ID of wrapper, all we do is pass through the hash for the ID and then a wrapper. So that there is going to go out and grab that wrapper element and return it to us. Now in vanilla JavaScript, it's very similar, but instead of this dollar sign right here, what we do is we say document and we use a method on the documents object called query selector. There we go. So yeah, there's a few more characters, but it does pretty much exactly the same thing. And that's gonna go out and grab this wrapper element and return it to us. So let's store this in a variable or a constant rather, and we'll call this wrap, set it equal to this document.querySelector wrapper. Cool, so it's grabbed that element and it's storing that in this variable right here. Let's log that to the console. So we'll say console.log, and we're gonna log out the wrap variable. And if I save this, we can see this is logged to the console. Cool, so now we've gone out and we've grabbed that element. Really simple. So say we wanna get a bit more technical with this. We wanna grab something which is not as straightforward as this. Say for example, we wanna grab this element right here. So if we inspect this, then we can see that this is a span. It has the class of name. It's an li tag. It's also the second child within the UL, so we can use that and it's also inside this book list. So let's grab this. I'm gonna grab the book list ID first of all, and I'm gonna change this wrapper to book list, oops. And then inside that we wanna grab an li, but remember, not just any li, the second child. And we can do that using a pseudo class, so colon, then nth hyphen child in brackets two, so we want the second child, then we want the class of name, which is a span tag. So this is gonna go out and grab that element now. And instead of calling it wrap, I'm gonna call it WMF, wise man's fear, because that's what we want right there. So let's log this to the console, save it and refresh over here. And now we can see we get that element right there, cool. So we can pass through any valid CSS selector right here to grab any element we want. And if you need a refresh on CSS, I've got a CSS for beginners tutorial series on this channel, the link is down below. Okay, cool. So say we wanna grab more than one element. Say we wanna grab some kind of collection of elements like we have done in the previous tutorial. So I might want to grab every single span tag, right? Not just one of them, but every single one of them. So how would we do that? Well, first of all, I'm gonna comment this dude out so it's not logged to the console and then i'm going to come underneath and i'm going to say var books is equal to documents dot query selector to query the dom and then inside i'm going to pass through book hyphen list then we want an li tag within that and then any name class within that because every span has that class of name so if we inspect the element we can see that this span has a class of name, this class has a span of name, this one does, etc. So we're grabbing all of those elements. Everything with a class of name that's inside an li, inside the book list. So let's log this to the console. And it's books. Save that. Okay, let's see what happens over here. And we only get one of them, the very top one, name of the wind. So why is that? Well, when we use this method right here, the query selector, this is only ever gonna return one single element to us. It doesn't return multiple ones. So when there's multiple ones in a web page, it's gonna grab the first one it finds and return that to us. Hmm, 
We don't want that, we want all of them. Now all we need to do is make one quick little tweak to this. So I'm gonna comment this out for a second. Then I'm gonna grab this, copy it and paste it down here. And we don't need to declare the variable keyword again because we've already declared this variable. We're just changing it here. And this time we're gonna set it equal to document.querySelector all. So whereas this one only returns one element, query selector, query select all is going to return a collection of elements. All right. So now this is going to grab every element with a class of name inside an li inside the book list. So if we log this books variable to the console now, console.log books, save it. Now we see this collection of elements right here. Pretty cool. So we can use these two different methods to either grab one element or several elements. And even if you use a selector in query select all and there's only one of those elements on a page, it's still gonna return it in collection form in square brackets like this. So for example, if I change this again to wrapper, there's only one wrapper on the page and I'm gonna save it. We can see we still get that one element inside the square brackets, okay? So it's still returning it in some kind of collection. Let's undo that. Now I wanna show you how we can cycle through this collection of books, very similar to how we did it in the previous tutorial. We're gonna to have to turn this books thing right here into an array to use for each on it, or we could use a for loop. I prefer the array method using for each. So I'm gonna say array dot from, then in brackets books, because we wanna create an array from this variable. Then when it's an array, we can use the for each method on it, and pass through a function, and inside the function, we can pass through the book parameter, which is gonna be the book that it's iterating through at that moment in time. Then we can log this to the console. So I'll say console.log the book, and this should all work. So let's save this now and refresh over here. And now we can see each of these is logged to the console, voila. So there we go, my friends. That is a really simple way to query the DOM using these two different methods. Query selector for one element, query selector all for multiple elements. So now we know a few different ways to query the DOM. In the next tutorial, what I'm gonna do is move on and show you how we can actually start to change the content and the HTML on the web page.